Hey, Viking fans, I know you were surprised as me when Quesi Adolfo Mensa released Armand Watts, and now Armand Watts is a bear. What if I was to tell you that we already had someone on the team that was just as good, if not better than him, in three, two, one. Hey, Skull brothers and sisters, this is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, at Skull World. Instagram's still in the works. Now, make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Make sure you do that. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Why? Because I'm giving away free money. The rules are in the description below. I want to give you, uh, right now, I'm up to $50. For sure, giving away that on game day. More subscribers, the more money I give away. Let's go. Subscribe, like, and comment. I'm also on Purple Pocket Podcast. My boy, um, MC Rap, the Purple MLK, because he's bringing all the fans together. Over there on Purple Pocket Podcast. Make sure you subscribe over there. He's my man. We go live regularly. We also go live, me and him, every Tuesday night, 8 15, 9 15 Eastern, 8 15 Central. We do that. On Tuesday nights, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment over there too on Skull World. Also on Facebook and Twitter, we go live on all three, all three uh, platforms. It's fun. Go do that. Make sure you ring the bell on everything because you don't miss an episode. Love you guys. Thank you for putting me on YouTube and keeping me going strong. I love it. Now let's get started. Like you, I was like, Armand Watts, we just made the Bears better. That's my first reaction. It's my gut reaction. This may be revisionist history. This may be me grasping at hope. I don't know. But there is a reason why we dropped Armand Watts. Was he even that good? Now, it no, just looking at Armand Watts' stats, I'm going to start off doing that. Armand Watts, his rookie year, he's a six-round draft pick, 190th overall or something like that. A six-round draft pick. He started one game his rookie year. He got one and a half sacks, uh, 13, 13 combined tackles in seven games, one start. Did not start a game in 2020. Played 16 games, half sack, half sack. 31 combined tackles. Most of them assists. Now, last year, 17 games, started nine. He forced two fumbles. He forced one in his rookie year, too. Five sacks, 46 combined. Now, he played because we had players hurt. He started because we had players hurt. He got his opportunity. He got five sacks. That gave us per, a lot of optimism. A lot of optimism going into this season. Now, you may be aware that we were one of the best teams in the league in sacks. But our leading sack getter had like seven. That was the most. Seven. We manufactured sacks last year. We did. We we stunted. We, we brought people off the edge. We confused, you know, at times we confused the line to get these sacks. But we gave up chunks and chunks of yardage. That was the, uh, that's what happened. That's undisputed. We were one of the worst defenses in the league last year. Terrible at the run. Not much better in the pass. We were a terrible defense last year. Armand Watts got five sacks. What does that mean, really? When we were one of the worst defenses and we had were one of the best sacks, sacking teams. What does that mean? So I would not put a whole lot of weight on Watts' five sacks last year, okay? Because this guy, Jonathan Bullard, if you prorate his sacks on years and years he has, he would have been close to five every every time too. So I'm going to compare these two guys. I am going to... Let's uh, start off with 
his uh his uh, stats that he had throughout the years. He played for the. He got drafted by the Bears in the third round. So he's a third round pick. More highly thought of. I mean, one of the write ups I had on Watts is that he underperformed his senior year. That he wasn't much thought of his senior year. Bullard, on the other hand, was a third round draft pick. And if you go look at video, and I'll put a highlight reel, I'll have a warning for language on the music. <laughs> Anyways, the music. Um, I'll put, I'll put that in the description below, a highlight reel of him at Florida and why he was such a, you know, he was a well thought of uh, five technique coming out of, you know, coming out of Florida, playing in the SEC. Now, Chicago Bears, 2016, he gets drafted, uh, plays in 14, starts one. Chicago Bears, second year, 16, starts three. 2018, 16 starts one. Arizona Cardinals, nine games start six. Seattle Seahawks, six starts zero. Last year, nine games starts four. He had 21 total tackles, zero sacks. Now, what does that mean? Probably means he played on a really crappy team. It was Atlanta Falcons, Arizona Cardinals. You know, they. I think back then they probably had a pretty good defense. He was a backup. So he's been a backup his whole career. He's had 15 starts. He's had three and a half sacks. Uh, 65 solo tackles for 113 total. So he has been a backup player most of the time. Been a backup player most of the time. No doubt. No doubt about it. He had a season with the Arizona Cardinals where he started six games, had one and a half sacks. You prorate that for a 17-game season, and we're talking about four or five sacks. That's the same kind of season, and one year later than Armand Watts did. Okay, he's only 28. Jonathan Bullard is. He's only 28 years old. He's still got life in him, and if you go look at his video of Florida, you can see why we liked him. We can see why we said, hey, let's go get this guy. Let's put him on our team. He went, he went unnoticed in preseason, but did Armand Watts do a whole lot either? So I, I would tell you between the combination of Blacklock and this guy, it was easy to get let Watts go. I still probably say don't do it. We, we had another player that we could have let go other than Armand Watts, let him fight it out a little bit, put him on the trade market um, a little bit later maybe. Um, if he performs well, but do not just release him. I still disagree with that, but the pain is not as high when I look at Jonathan Bullard. Now, Watts was taller, 6'5". He was bigger, 290 or 300. Jonathan Bullard, I think is the same, close to the same weight now, but in college, he was 280, um, 290, 285. His hand size was 10. That's bigger than Watts. His arm length, roughly the same. The where it compares is speed. Jonathan Buller ran a 4.93. Armand Watts ran a 5.23. Okay, and this is this is a guy that's supposed to be playing the five technique at defensive end. We're not wanting a guy that runs a 5.23 playing defensive end for us. We want someone faster. Now, Jonathan Bullard makes more sense athletic-wise. Your bench press 23, 32-inch um, vertical. That's really good for a big guy. Broad jump, 116, 116 inches. Also good for a big guy. Three-cone drill, pretty reasonable for alignment. 731, 20-yard shuttle, 456. His player bio coming in the draft, they even mentioned Sheree Floyd here. The Gators have had a versatile defensive lineman selected in the first round in two of the last three drafts. Sheree Floyd to Minnesota in 2013 and Dominic Easley by the Patriots in 2014. Bullard is looking to become the next in line. The former five-star recruit has moved between and and tackle during his career. Very true story. He hasn't played a 3-4 yet. Um, showing off both quickness and power. 
He was fairly productive despite playing inside often as a junior, eight and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. That's another thing. Watts had three tackles for loss last year. I thought you counted sacks as tackle for loss, but nope, three tackles for loss last year. But really turned into juice as a senior, 66 tackles, 17 and a half tackles for loss as a senior. 66 tackles, 17 and a half for loss, six and a half sacks as the D tackle. Earning third team All American honors from the Associated Press as well as consensus first team All SEC honors. Third team All American, first team SEC. This is what we got free, basically. He's a, probably got. I don't know. I didn't look his contract, but it's not much. I'm sure. Is overview. Then this is me reading this for the first time. Do we have a diamond in the rough? Do we? Let's find out. I looked at his video. I've raved about him on our live saying, hey, he had awesome tape in college. Let's find out what he can do. Let's find out what he can do with our coaches. Remember, Zadarius Smith came to the Vikings because of Petten. And how he changed his career when he went from the Bill, sorry, the, I don't know, where Seattle, I forget, Ravens, I don't know, when he came uh, to the Packers. Now, overview, he has a frame to add more functional strength and mass, may need to, may need to, since his best fit appears to be as a one-gapping defensive tackle. An attacking scheme, Buller can be a very disruptive player off the snap when the pad level is good. And he has an excellent tackler, allowing no broken or missed tackles all season. Bullard will need to improve his pass rush and add necessary size, but he is ascending talent whose game should continue to prove the next level. He didn't need to gain weight to become a tackle. He needed to stay the same and become a five-tech defensive end. This is a bad write-up. A pigeonhole him in the wrong position. He's not a D-tackle. He's a prototypical prototypical five technique defensive end strengths quick and instinctive off the snap love to hear that has sense of where the ball is going and heads in that direction moves well down the line against zone plays roulette i'm loving this uses hands inside shoulder to brace against blockers to prevent a cross face block awesome comes out of his stance with good pad level and burst Attacks gap and produces disruptive results. Half of his tackles gained two yards or less and was credited with 17 and a half tackles for loss. Hard charging, high effort defender. I'm just smiling ear to ear on what they thought of this guy because he had an awesome senior year. Has above average change of direction talent for the size and second gear in pursuit of ball carriers. Competitive and willing to mix it up. Has several physical reps against LSU and v Vidal Alexander, hands are solid but can be better, able to generate a bull rush, and has the potential to roll through guards with weak edges and route to the quarterback. Weaknesses, okay? Leggy with duck-footed gait, all right, that's weird. Tweener frame, that's because he's not a D-tackle. He's a prototypical, this is a Otamawu, what he's going to look like in five years. Comes off the ball with good pad level, but plays taller and taller as he play continues. Don't see that, at least at college. Always in a hurry and is prone to overrun his fits against a uh, zone and gets washed down. Doesn't play with much quick twitch movement. That's a contradiction. Said he's quick out of the ball and he doesn't play with quick twitch. Average explosiveness and suddenness means the pad level and technique have to be tightened up. Get turned out of the gaps by double teams. All right, who doesn't? But he's not supposed to be playing a D tackle. His initial pass rush doesn't create an advantage. He tends to sit on blocks and look to uh, bat the ball down. All right, guys. So I missed on a couple players this year. I was optimistic. They didn't have any tape, but they were big in college, right? Um, R Robinson and Twyman. But Twyman sat out two years of football. He was going to be rusty, and he showed it. He's still on our team. So is Robinson. Robinson. Bullard's been an NFL player for a while and has has played in games. So he has experience. 
He's a D end and a 3-4 defense. That's where he should be playing. He ran a 4-9-3, which is three-tenths of a second faster than Armand Watts. He's a faster player. He ran down quarterbacks in college. He ran down running backs in college. He he runs sideline. He runs from his position to the sideline as good as anybody. He has gap quickness. I, he's a defensive end. He's not a tackle. And now he's playing in the right spot for the right defensive players. This guy is as good, if not a little better, than Armand Watts. He will finally have a chance to prove it if he fends off uh, Blacklock, which I think he can. Because honest to God, if you go look at Blacklock's college tape, who was a second rounder, and you go look at just Jonathan Bullard's tape as a college player, it's like night and day how much better Jonathan Bullard was his senior year at Florida than than uh, Blacklock was. Blacklock probably a little quicker player though. He's even a little, maybe even a little quicker than uh, Bullard, but I think this guy's a better football player. We'll see, man. Let's see if we can get it out of him. I like the potential. He's still only 28. Let's do it. That's my rant. That's my hey. Yeah, sky is blue still, guys. We we didn't lose a we didn't lose a stud. We lose an average player, at least who got an opportunity and played well for us on a bad team. I've said enough about Armand Watts. Good luck in in the Bears. I hope you lose to us twice a year. I, you know, you're not a Viking anymore. I wanted you here, but you're not a Viking anymore, unfortunately. You would have been a nice backup behind Jonathan Bullard. All right. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Skull World. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment. The rules are in the description below for my contest. Read them. Enter the contest. All you have to do is go go comment on some vi videos, man. How easy is that? Give me a skull. All right. See you next time. Skull Vikes. Cue the music. Thank you, Viking fans, for listening. Make sure you catch my other episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Skull Vikes.